Hey everybody, welcome back. So, have you ever looked at a piece of maybe used gear and thought, oh man, that's a great price, but the battery plate's on it, it's wrong. I want to use V-mount and this is what's on it, a gold mount. Or, I use gold mount and it's got a V-mount on it. What a stupid mess this is, and yet, they want to push a third battery standard on us. Let's just not go there for now. Anyway, what I wanted to get into in this video is how to change these plates because it's actually pretty straightforward. So if you've got a piece of gear that you're considering buying but it's got the wrong plate, you're probably not going to change your battery system or get a second set of other mount batteries. What you probably want is to do this. Take this off and put this guy on or the other way around. And surprisingly, that's actually really straightforward and I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. In fact, this plate was actually on this charger and I wound up getting some V-mount batteries, which is a long story, but COVID and availability is a short version. And I changed this charger over to V-mount. In fact, just to mess with people, I could have left one on each side, which would have been an interesting thing. The first question is gonna be, what about just getting the plate on here? They look different. Well, surprisingly, underneath, most things actually have mounting holes for both styles of plates. Um, they're just in here and you have to match the screws up and you're good to go. The other half of it is some of these plates are actually identical. Who would have thought? For example, IDX V-mount plates and these guys actually mount up, they go in the same holes sometimes. Um, this plate is what's called a Panasonic style uh, bolt pattern. That seems to be about the most popular common one out there that most people um, engineer into their products. So if you get a Panasonic mount plate, you're probably good. Likewise, these guys are actually standardized, so that's no problem. When you go out looking for battery plates or imported ones like this for $20, $25, and they generally work fine. Sometimes with genuine Anton Bauer batteries, the fit isn't always the best. The fit can be snug, but these will eventually wear in. And the reason that they don't fit on or they fit very snug is that the spacing and the pins, the lugs on the back of the battery tend to be slightly smaller on certain batteries, uh, one guess whose, and so getting them to fit onto these plates, they tend to be a little bit snug. You can either replace the lugs with imported ones, or you might be able to try sanding this down a little bit. There's a few ways to do it, but either way, they'll generally fit, especially if you wear them in a little bit. V-mounts, these guys are a little bit more challenging, so let's start on this. This plate I got off of a light, it had the wrong plate because I put gold mount on it, and the spring on it, it really isn't the best, and this plate tends to not really grab the battery well, and all the problems that you've heard about V-mount plates, this is one of those. So this was no doubt a very cheap one, but I had it laying around, and when I converted this charger from gold mount to V-mount, surprisingly, um, it's what I had and I put on, so I learned that lesson. This one, which has a roundish button on here. It's not a genuine IDX, but it looks pretty close. Um, works really well. The mechanism is very smooth. The battery tends to latch on and release really well. So with V-mounts, you really tend to get what you pay for. With these guys, it tends to be less critical. It, I'd really kind of recommend that you go with IDX battery plates because I think they're kind of the um, old standard of battery mounts in terms of fit, finish, they work. They're good enough that many camera manufacturers actually use them on their cameras. So that's kind of a hint that those, those are the ones that you probably want to use. But this one with a rounded style button seems to have a really good latch. It was probably half the price. Works probably almost as well, so I'm fine with it. I would just say stay away from the super cheap ones. Uh, this one has kind of a square button with a weird latch. The spring is stiff. The slotch isn't quite right. It's, it's all just a little bit wonky. And um, yeah, it's not my favorite, but I had it sitting around and I got this charger up because he needed a charger for V-mounts. All right, there's one more thing I'd like to talk about, and that is the data connection inside these guys. It's the pins on the bottom or on gold mounts, they're in here. And what they do is a serial port, it's power for the electronics so that the battery and whatever you've got attached to talk. In theory, you've got more accurate voltage or other communications going on depending on what they implemented. And the funny thing is I found that most of the time, 
they're not implemented. Uh, compatibility of protocols, contacts, whatever. But point is, don't drive yourself crazy if you don't get it connected because the charger is still going to work, the power from the battery into whatever you're powering is still going to work, and you just may not theoretically get that extra metadata or control, but I haven't found an actual use that it makes any difference, and feel free to correct me down there on your example case because the internet will always find an example case of when you're wrong, so have at it, guys. Anyway, let's get into actually changing one of these plates over and see how it's done. It's pretty straightforward. Also, fair warning, I'm not responsible if you blow your gear up, you reverse plus and minus, you let the blue genie out. Not my fault, not my responsibility. That's 100% on you, so do what we care. So let's get right into this. I assume you've got a set of tools here, including a set of appropriate Allen keys, soldering iron solder, wire stripping tools and all the rest of that stuff. So I'm just gonna remove the plate. I think this is a three millimeter hex that I'm using to get this off. And this one's pretty simple and straightforward. There are no hidden connectors inside. So this one's probably gonna be a little bit easier to change over. Here I'm just checking out and comparing the two and seeing that yes, the screw holes that I need for the gold mount actually are there. So let's figure out what we're going to do here. But what I'm trying to remove here is actually some sort of red insulating material that's actually over the terminals, which is a good safety idea. And if you can replace this either with hot glue or something else to cover the terminals once you've got this put together, that's a pretty good idea. Initially, I'm going to try and unsolder the wires from the V-mount plate. But for whatever reason, my soldering iron just wasn't putting out enough heat to stay. And it is a fairly hot iron that's capable of delivering quite a bit of heat. But for whatever reason, I wound up, in this case, just cutting the thing off because that proved to be the easiest way of going about this. So, fair warning, you might, in order to get these wires off on the plates, need a fairly large soldering iron up in the 75 or 100 watt size. I think the one that I've got is rated at, oh, probably 35 watts. Since I did not have any special connector inside to deal with, I just went and stripped the ends off clean, knowing that I was going to solder these up to my new battery plate. With the end stripped off, I am ready to put some heat shrink tubing on because, of course, you want to put the tubing on before you solder everything together. I guess no one's ever made that mistake, have they? And it's a really, really good idea to use heat shrink tubing because of the power and current involved. You definitely do not want to short out the battery and not have any sort of fused connection because it's basically a mini arc welder. So cover your connections up. Using the right kind of solder, I of course solder these wires up with absolutely no problem. These are what would be considered butt joints where I mashed the strands together, wrapped them up around each other, and soldered away and was generous with that. And for whatever reason, I quite wasn't happy with this solder joint. Maybe it looked a little bit cold or something. So I did actually wind up redoing it so that I had a joint that I was happy with. And sometimes this just goes to make the point that you just need to sink a good deal of heat into the connection in order to get a good, clean, shiny, proper joint. No problem. We're not in a rush here. In order to really be careful about these connections, I'm actually going to put one wrap of electrical tape around first as a sort of first layer, and then I am going to bring the heat shrink tubing over that to secure it in place. So I've got plenty of insulating material here that this should be able to survive the typical use and abuse and vibration and motion that you're going to get for something that's mobile and it's going to be used in a vehicle and subject to vibration. I'm going to get out my heat gun next and shrink up the tubing to secure everything into place. 
There's always a little bit of fun to get these wires to fold up and lay flat inside the plate. Uh, these They're all a little bit different. They're all kind of tricky, but you just mess around a bit and figure it out to get them to lay flat. And this is when I found out that the screws that I happened to have, their hex caps, were not the right size. The original ones didn't fit in the holes, or they were too short. And of course, the bolts or screws, whichever you want to call them, um, that I had were, of course, way too long. So I did some measuring between the new screws and the old ones and figured out, okay, so this is the length that I'm going to need and I got to cut these all off. And I, having figured out exactly what my length should be, I put a nut onto the screw and now I cut these to length. This probably wasn't the best way to cut them, but they're tiny, they're fine. And of course, I don't expect that everyone necessarily has a lathe type vise that I do, but I do enough machine work that I own one of these. They're pretty handy for this sort of specialized machine work, but you could have just as easily have grabbed one of these screws in a pair of vice grips or something, and there's that screw trying to spin off and kill me, but I just spun it back on and of course repeat this three more times, so we've got a total of four screws. Finally, with a set of screws that are all of the correct length, we're going to try and put it together yet one more time. And this time, of course, it went perfectly well, so we're ready to, of course... All right, it's time to test this out and see if it works. Let's go get a big brick battery that I've got sitting around. It's NICADS, but any suitable battery for this purpose will do. And now the moment of truth. Did I get it right? Let's hit the power switch and find out. Yes, the light went on and no blue smoke. We did good. Excellent. So there you have it. This really wasn't that complicated of a job, but keep in mind I did speed up through parts of this because I'm sure you didn't necessarily need to sit and see this in real time when the actual job probably took me eh, about an hour to complete, including cutting the screws off. If the screws would have fit, this probably would have taken at least 15 minutes less. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Leave your comments down below, and I will see everybody next time.